All right, guys, uh, I'm Nigel Paquin. I'm from Stellar J Films. I'm a videographer, filmmaker, and I love gear. I'm a gearaholic. <laughs> and <laughs> recently I've gotten into um, Zoom because, well, my business has taken a big hit recently because nobody wants you to film events because, well, everyone is uh, not allowed to be together like they used to. So I'm moving into Zoom and I want to start using this platform. I believe it's going to be something that we can all use and I want to help people because there's a lot of uh, friends out there who don't know what's going on with uh, microphones and cameras and things like that. So basically how to create killer zoom calls the gear and number one is your uh, number one is the camera and most of us have laptops I believe so we're going to look at laptop cameras webcams smartphones DLSR micro four thirds and capture cards. And I'll walk you through sort of, you know, the overview of what you can use with these. Okay, so the first one is a MacBook. Most of us have MacBooks or, well, not all of us have MacBooks, but I have two MacBooks in my house myself. And the camera is pretty good. It's a 720p camera. Overall, the camera is not bad. I, I'm, I'm a bit of a stickler. I don't really like it so much, but if you're in a, if you're in a pinch, you can definitely use it. Um, it can get the job done. And the next one is using webcams. Now I'm going to show you guys some pretty cool stuff here. These webcams have just gone ballistic. The prices are crazy expensive. It's almost impossible now. I do a lot of Amazon and I can show you here the prices for the past month alone on web cameras have gone from $65 all the way up to $295. <laughs> and the peak, it's sitting right now at around 235. So to be honest, I would stay away from webcams because the price has just gotten insanely expensive. So it's not going to be very viable right now to head into webcams. So probably going to have to scratch that particular one. That one's been around for nine years. So it is an extremely popular uh, web camera from Logitech. The other one is another Logitech again. This is considered a really good one, but again, the price has just gone from $89 to an amazing uh, $299 and $309. If you're wondering why the price goes up, it's called retail arbitrage. The people who own these products or have these products in stock are jacking up the prices. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. Amazon is trying to stop this, but uh, it is price gouging and it's been around for as long as you can imagine. The next one is, uh, this is kind of like an off-brand shoot model. I'm not familiar with it, but it's called Each. And this one kind of has your microphone, has everything all sort of set to one. It's number one in webcams, probably because the price is so cheap at $57. And the price before was 29 and slowly that price is going all the way up to $54. So if you guys are interested to know how to install this, this is called the Keepa plugin. And what it does is it puts the plugin into your Amazon and it allows you to see the price history. And it's really useful because you don't want to be paying um, $300 thinking you're getting a great webcam when before it was only like a you know $80 webcam. So um, be careful of all this uh, price gouging that's going on. This is another offshoot a uh, company they're from china they've been around for a long time 79 dollars. it's 4k maybe not the best but again if you're in a pinch you can definitely go for the chinese name brand types uh smartphones are probably going to be your best choice you guys know that you guys are using you know your ipads and iphones and things like that uh obviously if you can use your you know smartphones they're pretty darn good they have 4k capability so i think probably a smartphone would be your best option right now because the prices have just gotten crazy expensive this is not going to be viable for most of you but if you're like me and you have expensive cameras you can use them they're dlsr and micro four thirds mirrorless cameras and the way that you do it is you need something called a capture cam and what you do is you plug this into your computer you take the hdmi and it goes into the capture card and then from here you can basically take your camera plug it into your laptop and use it as a webcam. And here you can see a bit of a before and after. So that's before and that's after. Um, the quality is really good. I mean, it's it's basically, if you see those uh, video game guys and you, they're playing video games all day long on YouTube and things like that, that's what they're using are these capture cards. 
there's just one problem. Uh, capture cards have, again, <laughs> gone from the previous price of $129 all the way up to an amazing, oh, well, the price went up to $449. So this is not going to be a viable option to buy the best one on the market, but there are some offshoot uh, types. Uh, these ones are kind of the Chinese imports, and these ones are about $109. Uh, you can buy them in Japan for around uh, 12,000 to 15,000 yen. I spent about 15,000 yen on mine and it's from Taiwan and it's what I'm using right now actually. So that's the capture card I'm using. And this one's pretty good, has some pretty good reviews. All right, so that is the overview of webcams. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Please shoot away. Go ahead if you have any questions, please. Um, my husband is a professional photographer. You know that. Yeah. Uh, but it's a big ass camera. <laughs> well, if you get yourself a uh, capture card from Amazon Japan for around 15,000 yen, 12 to 15,000 yen, you could actually use that DLSR camera. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an option. Maybe you never thought about no. GoPros could also work. If you want to slap on a GoPro, if it has an HDMI in. You could actually use a GoPro camera, which is maybe you never thought about it. Maybe you got an old GoPro just sitting around the house. Uh, number two, uh, microphones. Uh, we're going to look at polar patterns. And this is how microphones uh, take the, uh, what do you call it? The incoming sounds and the patterns that come into the microphone. Uh, we're going to be looking at laptop uh, onboard microphones and headsets, uh, smartphone earbuds, headset plus a built-in microphone, lapel mics, mini shotgun plus some extras, tripod or desk boom stands, USB studio condenser mics, and audio interfaces. So the first thing you have is what we call the polar patterns. And before you buy you know, expensive mics, you like to know how it interprets the sound. You have omnidirectional, subcardioid, and cardioid microphones. The microphone I'm using right now is called a shotgun microphone, and this is the one down here. That's where that's how you get that really crispy sound, and it's really good for interviews, and it works pretty good for my, you know, setup that I have here. It's a bit overkill for you guys. I don't think you'd want to use something like this, but uh, again, cardioid is what you want to be using. If it's shaped like a heart, then that's that's good because it gets rid of the sound that's in the front of the mic, and it only accepts the mic that's coming from the back. So. That's a good microphone to use. If you're going to be doing like a like a people in the front and people in the back, you might want to get yourself a sub cardioid uh, microphone. So again, uh, podcasters generally use the cardioid uh, microphones. They're probably the most common and most popular type of uh, polar pattern. As you can see in the diagram, it has a sweet spot exactly in front of the microphone while it neglects the sounds coming from the back of the phone, like I said before. And I don't think you need a cardioid microphone. If you guys want, I can put the links of all these uh, information in the description when I upload this onto YouTube. If you have like a MacBook computer, like a new one like I have, they have really good microphones. This particular lady actually sang a song and she was actually proving that the microphone was so good she could use it for actually recording her audio. So you might want to be using your laptop uh, audio, which is pretty good. Now, if you're going to use your laptop, I'd highly recommend just getting some cheap little headphones. Uh, because if you don't use headphones, you're going to get a lot of reverb and bouncing off the walls and things like that. So if you can just, you know, get some headphones, it could be anything, um, but definitely use the wire types. Don't use Bluetooth because Bluetooth, there's a lot of latency and sometimes the audio will break up and it just, you can have a lot of issues. So I'd recommend just the simple wired 3.5 millimeter types. Those are going to be your best bet. Plug it into your laptop, your iPad, whatever you have. Um, and that should be really good. Okay. So combine those two and you should be good to go. The smartphone earbuds. Now this is something that's probably sitting in your desk. You may not be using these, but, uh, these actually have really good sound. And just even as I was telling you guys, I was watching Japanese TV today and they're using these on Japanese TV. The news presenters are, you know, having to broadcast from home and lo and behold, you probably have some of these just sitting in your you know, bag somewhere. And that's the polar pattern that it produces. So it's really good. It gets rid of the sound around 
the microphone and it just picks up what's in front. The headset built in. Now, I used to use this a long time ago, kind of like the gamer guys, you know, they don't want to have uh, their hands touching the microphone and things like that. I really don't know much about them, but they're really cheap. So for 30 bucks, you can get into the game. These probably work pretty good. Again, I haven't used these, so, but uh, I'm sure if you look at the reviews, do your due diligence and do some research, you might be able to, you know, start using these type of uh, uh, headphones with the microphone built in. Okay, There's lots of them to choose from. Again, you might want to be looking at your prices to see if the prices are just going crazy. Again, look at this one, uh, $58 and the current price is sitting at $129. Hi, yay, yay. And so, yeah, you might want to, you know, just because it's $129 doesn't mean it's great. <laughs> it used to be $58. <laughs> the price has doubled. <laughs> this is called a lapel microphone. I use this a lot in interviews and it's a fantastic mic. It's, uh, I believe, omnidirectional and it picks up all the sound in a circular pattern. So you may not want to use it, but they are really good. They can uh, go on your spot right in here. So sometimes I put it on here on the person. Um, I've actually put them on my hat. I've actually clipped it onto my hat. There's lots of cool little places you can stick it. Um, but uh, this is something you might want to, you know, get into. This particular company is called Rode. And uh, this is the road. This is what I'm using right now as a road. And what's really cool about these roads is they can actually go into your iPhone. And so for a few dollars more, uh, you will need right here. If you get this wire, it's called a TRS to TRS wire. And if you plug that into your iPad, this will take the input jack of your iPad and then you'll be able to use the uh, lavalier microphone. So for what, how much are these things? They are $29 expensive wire to have but it's really good to have in the bag and you'll be able to record with a lapel microphone uh, directly into your ipad and things like that so something to think about the mini shotgun is pro pretty much every videographer's bread and butter microphone uh, these guys are awesome uh, i've seen a lot of youtubers where they actually take this and make a boom pole and they just put it right up above here like so uh, some youtubers actually put it down to the low section and sort of aim it up. You always want to aim these shotguns for your chest. You want to hit that chest right here. And so the closer you get, the more, you know, the more closer it sounds like that, the further you get, it starts to sound like that. But uh, from, from a good distance, like so, you can get some really good crispy audio. Not too bad, actually. The price has been holding steady at around 59 to $60. And um, it's a great mic. I've been using it for three years solid and it hasn't broke. It's just an awesome microphone. And they work again with smartphones and iPads. So especially with you, Mickey, you might want to be jacking that up on your iPad one day. Could be pretty good. If you are going to use like a boom pole type system, you're going to have this microphone, but this little short little wire, you're going to need some distance. So I, uh, I have this particular wire. It's three meters, I believe. So 20 feet. So like if your iPad was like over here, you could run this three meter wire and then have the boom microphone just sitting right up above you like so right here. So you need that three meters of wire to get that distance between, you know, the microphone and the iPad. $23, it's an investment you gotta make, but you're gonna have that distance you need between the microphone and your device. And the next one is just a simple little stand. Uh, I use these all the time, they're really good. These little stands like these ones here. And, you know, you might want to pick one up. I recommend getting one where you can actually move the ball head. If you can move the ball head, uh, it's really, really important because you have to adjust that uh, microphone. So you might have to move it around. So definitely you want to have one that has a ball head. Very, very important. Boom stands. Now, this is what I'm this is what I have here. This is extremely low budget. Eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. Twelve bucks. Look at that. You can stick your microphone on there. You can look like a DJ and you can pretty much stick any type of microphone onto here. And it's really good if you have it on your desk. Um, what I recommend is if you're not using it, I'll kind of, I don't know if I can show you, but you can swing it around really easily. So if you're not in teaching mode, if you're not using, if you're not using it, you can always just swing it away from your desk. The USB uh, studio condenser mics. Now it's going to cost you some money. But uh, the Blue Yeti is gonna is got an amazing reputation. 
It's used by all the podcasters and it's got a great reputation. It's got 16,000 ratings of four and a half stars. So, I mean, that's pretty crazy. Uh, price is holding at 129. And if you look at the price over the history for three months, it's been 129. Yellow is Amazon. So Amazon's had it in stock. And so it's just been holding steady at 129, which is good. So you're not getting price gouged, which is important. Uh, again, look at the reviews, make sure everybody's happy with it. But this has a great reputation. It's a USB, so it plugs directly into your computer, which is good. And then if you want, you can get something called a pop filter. And this takes away the sounds like a thuz and the tss and the, those different th sounds like that. And so for, you know, about 20 bucks, 25 bucks, you can put a pop filter on. But uh, personally, I don't use it. But if I do voice narration, I love using the pop filter. It gets rid of all those sounds that I told you about. Finally, the last thing you might want to think about is getting an audio interface. These things are amazing. You can plug in your microphones and you are able to control your gain and all your different sounds. And uh, it's that's what I'm using right now is the UR12. And the reason why I use it is because of this XLR cable, this particular three pin type microphone input here. My MacBook can't do this, but if I plug in this type of microphone here, then I can start using um, XLR microphones and then I can control the gain and, you know, the monitor, all the audio and things like that. So, um, you know, this is a bit of overkill for most of you, but if you are wanting to up your game, you might want to get an audio interface. All right, Mickey, what'd you think? It is, uh, if I were about to start a podcast or something yeah. like that, I think all of the things that you recommended would be really, really yeah. key. Um, yeah. But it's nice that you can, you know, just look at your your i iPhone <laughs> headphones and try to use that. I think I'm going to try to get my students to try to do that more. So, yeah, this yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, just get your students get pull out those old iPhone wire, uh, old iPhone headphones and stuff. So yeah, again, this was just to sort of inform you guys. Like this is from low budget all the way to overkill using audio interfaces. I, I highly recommend install the um, Keepa app on your Chrome and it shows you all the price history. It's like the stock market of Amazon prices. And before you make a purchase, don't just accept what Amazon has, man. You know, like, oh, it's $130. It must be amazing. No, it's gone up three times. And <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't let Amazon dictate those prices because it's all price gouging right now. So lighting, uh, window lighting. So that's the easiest form you can always use is just your window. Uh, basic LEDs, battery versus plugged outlet types, uh, 400 LED, 480 LED panels, 600 LED panels, diffusers, light stands, and RGB lights. So the first thing is window lighting. Uh, in filmmaking, the best lighting is the window. The only problem with window is the day changes. So if you start at 10, the lighting will be different at 5 o'clock. So it's good if your classes are every day at 10 o'clock and, and, you know, it's consistent. But if you've got that evening class, you can't use the windows. So um, also clouds can affect, obviously, the light that's coming in. But uh, if you, you know, if you're by like a sunny window every single day, you can always use your window. It's free. Next one is um, just basic LEDs. They're really inexpensive now because China has flooded the market, of course. Uh, the thing you need to know is if you're going to buy these LEDs, you're going to see these little battery options here. Um, the problem with it is these batteries don't last at all. Uh, the batteries themselves are really low ampage. So you probably get around 30 to 40 minutes tops and then you have to charge it. So I wouldn't recommend doing this. So just be careful. Don't fall for this trap. Oh, I can use battery operated LEDs. But again, the batteries are going to die on you. So um, I don't really recommend it if you're, you know, having to run lights all, all day long. Um, you might want to get yourself one of these instead. It's just a basic power adapter and you can plug this into the light. So these are pretty inexpensive at $10. And then now you don't need batteries. So that's great. You can just have a remote control turn on your lights and you're ready to go. And in fact, that's what I'm using right now with my lights. I just have a basic adapter. So that works really good. Uh, next one is a 480 LED panel. Uh, these things are awesome. I use these in interviews. Uh, they are probably overkill. But again, if you're interested in upping your game for a whole entire $80, you can have a fantastic light that's consistent. It's going to give you lots of good light. Price has been holding at $80. Next one is just a smaller one. I think this is around 200, 
the 162 LEDs. Uh, I use these. I use these a lot on my YouTube channel back in the day. Really easy. They're simple. Going to cost you thirty dollars. And uh, again, these are battery operated. But if you look here, it even says uh, where is it right here? AC DC power interface. So make sure when you make the purchase, look for that AC DC power interface, and then you're good to go. You can plug it in and turn it on. You, you don't have to worry about batteries anymore. Six hundred LED, and in fact, that's what I'm using right now on my face. I'm using a 600 LED. This is the exact same one that I bought about two years ago. It's been a really good light. It's uh, battery operated, but I have a uh, adapter running into it. And then what I do is I put a soft box on top of it. And if you just blast an LED on someone's face, it looks really bad. So with one of these soft boxes, it diffuses the light and it makes it more softer on someone's face. I'm sure Mickey, you would know your husband does a lot of this stuff with the you know studio work and things like that. But yeah, for $22, man, it's really inexpensive. And you've got a quality softbox that's just going to diffuse that light. And this is another diffuser. This one I really like. It's $44. It looks really cool. This is a simple light stand. So you're going to need some stands. So some of these LEDs, they're quite large. So you might want to get a, a couple of stands. Uh, one stand will cost you 20 bucks. RGB lights. And if you look at the background of mine right now, I'm using this particular light. This is, um, our, this is what's called an RGB light. And it stands for red, green, and blue. And you can actually control the colors of your light. So you can change it to any color that you that you like. Um, so if you are trying to get a stylistic approach of your background, you can actually just slap this thing on the back of your bookcase, your wall, whatever you want. You can put on a pink and you can have like different colors going on. And they're they're absolutely amazing lights a lot of my friends on youtube are they have two or three of these things and they're using it for their key light on their main face they've got one on their bookshelf and they've got another one on the side of the wall and i use this in my studio on uh on my uh, white backdrop and i change the color and stuff like that but this light is absolutely awesome it just came on the market about six months ago and everybody loves it all right this is the bonus tip <laughs> speed. Uh, first, we're going to do a speed test. We're going to check our Wi-Fi versus LAN. We're going to use the LAN and then we're going to use dongles. First of all, this is my internet uh, speed. And I did this test this morning or and then over here, 77. The, the way that I do this is I have a dongle. Now, a lot of people hate the dongles. Oh, I hate dongles. They're horrible. But um, I actually like dongles. You plug it in and it does all of this onto your computer. And you want to make sure if you purchase the dongle, if you're going to the dongle, you know, craze, uh, make sure it's got a LAN cable import or jack right here. And then you're good to go. You can plug in um, LAN and you don't have to use Wi-Fi. Uh, turn off Wi-Fi on your computer and that's it. You're good to go. You can start using LAN instead of uh, Wi-Fi. And that's a really good tip, you know, because speed is going to make a big difference if you're doing uh, multiple, uh, you know, chat rooms and things like that. So there you go. That's my bonus tip of the day. And that concludes my presentation. Well, we all have Hikari fiber, like my internet is Hikari fiber, but we have a router that emits Wi-Fi, right? And that Wi-Fi, we, we use our iPads to hook up to it. But sometimes your router is downstairs, your router is upstairs and you're downstairs and you're always like, man, why is my internet so slow? It's because you're trying to connect on the upstairs Wi-Fi upstairs. If you had a LAN cable, you could just, you know, you know, when you go to a hotel and you, you see the old school, you know, plug it into your computer, right? But recently computers don't have those LAN, LAN cables anymore. We've kind of gotten away from that. Everything's turned into Wi-Fi. I'm going old school. I'm actually like, hey, plug it in. And man, the difference, as you saw, the speed is just insane.